Hi, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair and iPhone Data Recovery, and today I'm working on an iPhone 8 that's in here for data recovery, uh, but the customer requested that this phone works afterwards when I'm done, so that's what I'm going to do for them. Um, this is a common problem on the iPhone 8, and I've seen this uh, like solution attempt a couple times lately, and I'm not sure why I'm seeing this. Um, basically on the iPhone 8, these are battery data transistors on here. And when you unplug the battery with your fingernail, you can knock these off sometimes. And this will cause the phone to be stuck at 1% and not be able to read the, the battery data percentage. So it'll just always think it's at 1%. Um, for some reason, I keep seeing like jumpers around here. People are trying to jump uh, around this problem. But you need these transistors on here in order to read the battery data. So I don't know what people are doing when they're trying this. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly repair this. Looks like I have some torn pads. And um, this phone should work you know, easily work when I'm done with it. So let's get started on it. So first things first, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit so I can, I can see what's going on. This is a pretty old phone at this point, so, you know, um, I don't expect to see a lot more of these, but I guess as people repair them, they still see, see them a lot, I, I suppose. So, this phone does turn on, it does fully boot up, it's just stuck at 1%. And the customer wants to pull his photos off of it, but he can't because when it's stuck at 1% like this, it will turn off every 3 minutes, give you a 3 minute reboot, and that's not enough time to, to pull any of the photos off of it. Well, it's enough to pull some of the photos, but not very much. And he said he tried to do that for a while, but eventually the battery completely died and he's not able to do it anymore. So you can get these transistors from, from most iPhone boards. I don't know why people don't just go ahead and like replace them. This pad is completely torn off. That doesn't usually happen. I'm wondering if that happened, you know, while they were doing the work on here or if it was just from the initial, like when it got torn off. I have a feeling it was from when they were doing the work more than anything. So this would literally be a two minute job if uh, that pad wasn't torn. But because that pad's torn, we're gonna have to you know, repair that pad. I'm going to take a quick look at what line that is and where that pad goes and where I might be able to get it from or I might have to just dig it out. That is my uh, I2C data line. So it looks like I just need that line from the connector itself. So two options. I can either connect it to this, this pad right here and run a little bit, uh, a little wire. Or I can try and dig this out and see if I can like just find the line in here still. I'll see if I can find the line first. If I can't, then I'll just uh, attach a wire. I think I can see it. It's just not very big. I don't. I'm not going to have a lot of room to work with right there. It might be okay. So let's see if I can get a reading off of uh, off of that little pad I exposed, a little copper. I'm 
no, I'm not really getting a reading. Oh, there it goes. I am getting a reading off of it. Okay. So that, that should be good enough. If I can attach a little bit of solder to there, then I'll be able to add like another solder ball on top of it and should be okay. So let's see if I can get some solder to stick to that. I do think I'm finally going to get a new iron pretty soon, uh, like a micro tip. That would make this a lot easier because the irons that I use are, are pretty big for like trace repair or via repair. It's quite hard to get something to stick to that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I think I'll just go ahead and cut a piece of solder and place it on there, try to melt it on there with my hot air instead. Still probably too big. Yeah, much too big. So let's see if I can get that to form into a ball on top of it without uh, without like uh, attaching to anything else around it. So that's going to be a little bit too big, um, but first let me see if it is attached. I can just do that by checking with my multimeter. And it is attached. So I think I'll just uh, try to remove a little bit of the solder from the top. Now I'm going to check it again, make sure it's still attached. And then after I check if it's still attached, I also need to check to make sure it's not uh, connected to ground on accident. So it's still attached, that's good. Now let's make sure it's not attached to ground. And it is not, so that's good. So that should be good enough. So I'll grab a new transistor. Um, I usually take them from iPhone 10 because I just have a lot of iPhone 10 boards hanging around. Uh, there should be one in here.
I'll just make sure that I don't have any uh, underfill on the bottom of it still. Okay, so this should be uh, good enough now. Okay, that should be attached now. And the easiest way for me to tell that is just to measure this pin here. Um, I'll get a, a reading now on that pin, whereas before I had no reading on it, if it's attached properly. Yeah, now I get a reading 0.64 normal, uh, 0.62 normal. So this should work now. I'm just going to go ahead and put it right into the housing and let's see if it's reading the battery data correctly or not. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just put it into its original housing. I'm going to use my battery because I believe the one in here is, is already dead. And this battery should uh, be more than the very bottom. It should be at least be partially charged. So when you have simple brakes like this, usually this is a, a technician broke this when they were doing a screen repair. Um, but when you have little brakes like this, um, you should just do the proper repair. It, it's very, you know, it's, it's very easy to to find the new transistor and just replace that in there and to fix the pad that was on there. Just a couple of uh, diode mode measurements to make sure everything's good. And yeah, uh, if you can see this, it says 46%. So now this is reading battery data and it's no longer going to give me a three minute reboot and this phone will just work properly. Um, so again, if you can do a proper repair, it's way better to do a proper repair rather than, um, you know, I, I still don't know what they're trying to do with the jumper solution. I know on some transistors and some like filters and some problems, you can just jump around it with a jumper wire. Um, this is not one of those cases. This one you just wanna 
get that transistor back on there so it can read the battery data so the, fun can, so the phone can uh, function normally. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.